Okay friends, it's time to get started on our job. One of the first things you want to do is safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so the wheels off the ground with the suspension hanging. After that, assuming you have hubcaps, carefully remove them. Once that's out of the way, we're going to continue on to each of our 17 millimeter lug studs. Keep in mind, these are lug studs, so as you remove them, they're going to have a shank with threading. When you remove the last one, there's going to be nothing holding the wheel on. Now, once you've taken out one, go ahead and put it in a couple threads, and then you can remove the other four. <laughs> remove your wheel, set it aside. Now that we have the wheel off of there, we have a nice clear view of our caliper. To take off the caliper, first I always like to push back the piston. The easiest way to do that, with it still on the vehicle, is with a small pry bar. You're going to carefully come in between the caliper and the rotor, and then just gently pry in slowly. We're just trying to push it in slowly so we can go ahead and remove the caliper from the area. Alright, so now that we have that pushed back, we can move back to this area right here. Now looking at this, you're going to notice that it has plastic covers. We're just going to go ahead and pop that off of there, we'll use our small pry bar. Behind that, you're going to find your slider pin. Let's get this one off of here as well. To remove these slider pins, we're going to use a 7 millimeter Allen head socket. We'll inspect these a little bit more thoroughly in a second. Set that aside. Continuing on with your small pry bar, let's go ahead and start prying this out of the area. We're going to do this from the top. We can start rolling it. Once we do, we'll lift it up and remove it from the bracket. Now, once you have it off of there, the next thing that I always like to do is to try to look along this area. It can be a little hard to see, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab the pad. We'll slide it down. Once you have it off of there, just give it a quick inspection. Make sure you don't see any fluid. Now we can just take the pads out of here. As you do it, give them a quick inspection to make sure they're not worn at a funny angle. Now let's move out here and we can start removing this T27 screw. To do that, we're going to use a Torx bit. Remove that, give it a quick inspection, set it aside because you will be reusing it. Set your old rotor aside. All right, so now it's going to be time to do a little bit of cleanup. Looking at the hub right here, where the rotor was situated, you can see that generally there's going to be a whole bunch of rust in that area. You want to go ahead and make sure that it's a nice clean surface, and then we'll continue. All right, so this looks good. Let's move along to the area where the pads are going to be situated. You want to make sure that you sand down along this area and up along the edge right here. Do that, and then right here. All right, at this point, it's coming along very well. Let's continue on cleaning up along this area. Typically, you're going to find a whole bunch of dirt and debris up there. You don't want anything falling down into your new brakes. Now we can start cleaning up the caliper as well. When you're cleaning the caliper, you also want to make sure that you don't have any dirt or debris inside of the slider ports. You want to make sure when the sliders are in there, they can move freely. Once you're done with this, you can go ahead and set it aside. Let's grab onto those slider pins. Looking at the slider pins, you can see along this area, I have some debris. I need to make sure that this entire shaft along here is clean and free of any debris. That way there, we don't have any restriction coming from our brakes. Go ahead and use a wire wheel. 
Now we can apply a little bit of copper never seize to this area here, right in between the bearing and where the rotor is supposed to go. Before we go ahead and put on our new rotor, let's go ahead and clean it down. Now as we put the rotor up on here, you want to pay attention to that mounting hole. You want to make sure it's aligned with the hub. Once the rotor's on there, go ahead and put in that mounting bolt. With your slider pins cleaned, let's go ahead and apply a little bit of high temperature caliper lubricant to them. Once you have it well lubricated, you're going to go ahead and put it up into your slider port on the caliper itself. I like to move them around a little bit just to make sure the grease is working in as it should. Now we can continue on doing the exact same thing to the other one. Continuing with the high temperature caliper lubricant, we're going to make our way all the way around the piston. And then along the back side of each of these ears. This is going to help with vibration dampening and noise reduction overall. Now we can get our pads in there. Looking at the back side, you can see that it has these ears. Those ears need to slide right into the piston right here. And then also for the outer pad, they're actually going to slide into this area. Now with that said, let's go ahead and start getting them into position. Take this, line up all three of those ears. Sometimes you just have to push one in a little bit. There we are. Now we can do the same to the outer pad. Once you have both of your brake pads in there, let's go ahead and start putting it in position down here. You want to make sure that you have your slider pins pushed back. And now we're going to take this at an angle just like I have it here. We're going to put the bottom in first. Looking down here, you can see that the caliper needs to slide along this area of the bracket and the pad needs to go over the other area of it. Once everything's perfectly aligned, make your way out back to the slider pins and start putting them in. Once you have both of them started in by hand, you can go ahead and snug them up. And then you can torque each of them to 22 foot-pounds. Reinstall your plastic covers. Let's grab the wheel. All right, now we can go ahead and get our wheel back up on here. Let's line up all of our holes. We can put in all five of our lug studs, we'll bottom them out, get the wheel safely back on the ground, and then we'll torque each of these to 89 foot-pounds. Torqued. Of course, if you have a hubcap, go ahead and put it on now. Pay attention to the valve stem hole. Go ahead and line that up and push it on. Okay, friends, we got one side of the brakes done. Now, of course, you're going to want to make sure you make your way over to the other side of the car and do the exact same thing. After that, go ahead and take it for a road test. Make sure you don't hear any funny noises. Thanks for watching.